Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Okay, so today we're going to talk about amino acids, which is your chapter 12 in semester 2 matriculation college syllabus. Right? So amino acids is another type of organic compounds which consisting of two different functional groups, which is amino group as well as carboxylic acid groups. Okay, amino acids is very essential in our life, which we cannot process it or we cannot produce it in our body. So it needs to be consumed through our diet by eating uh, sources of food that contains amino acids. There are 20 uh, essential acids that you need to know, all right, which we will talk about it more in throughout this video. Okay, so amino acids is a very important organic compound that you need to understand. Okay, under this topic of amino acids, we're only going to discover these four different CLO or cause learning outcome. Which first, I'm going to introduce to you the general structure of amino acid. Okay, next, we're going to learn on how to name amino acids according to the IUPAC name. Third, okay, from the amino acids, you're going to understand about Zwitter ions as well as isoelectronic points, which is being short form as PI. Okay, and lastly, we're going to understand or predict the structure of amino acids at different uh, properties of aqueous solution, either in the basic, acidic, or at the isoelectronic points. Alright, so let's go one by one okay so the first one okay so amino acids is an organic compound which has two different functional groups okay so we have here amino group and h2 and cooh group which is your carboxylic acid okay all amino acids can be differentiated by the terms g here so g stands for the side chain, okay, and it's the general terms for the side chain, alright, and this carbon is classified as alpha carbon because it's being attached by four different groups, okay, so what I mean by four different groups, we have here hydrogen atom, okay, the first, secondly, we have COOH, okay, third, we have the amino group, and G should be a different uh, atoms or group. Okay, so this is the general structure of alpha amino acid. Okay, so each amino acid is differentiated by the atoms of the groups that made up the side chain. Alright, so there are 20 standard amino acids that you need to know and you need to remember the side chains that difference between each of these 20 essentials amino acid again all of these amino acid can be differentiated by the side chain so it have the same general formula which we have amino groups carboxylic groups and hydrogen attached on the alpha carbon okay so what are the 20 essential amino acids that you need to know okay so these are the first 10 which we have alanine arginine Asparagine, aspartic acid, cysteine, glutamic acid, glutamine, glycine, histidine, and isoleucine. Okay, for your information, all the amino acid has a short form. Okay, for example, alanine can be short form into ALA, arginine can be short form into ARG, and so on for another amino acid. Okay, so let's first look. What is the side chains for the amino acids that is present in the screen? Okay, so alanine. Okay, so alanine has the side change of a metal group. So this is the side change. Okay, the one that I've been highlighted in a square form. Okay, followed by arginine, which we have a long side chain here. Okay, asparagine. Okay, so this is side chains of asparagine. Aspartic acid, so aspartic acid has a side chain with another carboxylic acid group. Cysteine, okay, this is the side chain with a thiols group. Glutamic acid is another 
examples of amino acid which has COOH in the side chain just like your aspartic acid. Alright, so glutamine, okay, so glutamine has this side chain, okay, so it has the amide group, okay, whereas for glycine, okay, it has only hydrogen atom, okay, so for your glycine, this carbon cannot be considered as alpha carbon. Why? Because they have two similar atoms here attached on the same carbon, which is this hydrogen in the side chain and hydrogen which is originally attached in the general formula. So glycine is the only essential amino acid that does not have alpha carbon attached to it. Okay, and then we have Histidine. So this is the side chain for your histidine. Okay, and this is the side chain for your isoleucine. Alright, so these are the first 10 essential amino acids. Okay, let's look for the another 10. Okay, so we have here leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, proline, serine, threonine, tryptophan, tyrosine, and valine. Okay. So let's circle what is the side chain of each of these 10 essential amino acids. So these are the side chains for leucine which consisting of hydrocarbon only. Okay, for lysine, we have this another amino groups on the side chain. Okay, for methionine, okay, it has thiols group. Okay, in phenylalanine, it's consisting of a benzene ring. Okay, in proline, Another amino group, but this is the ring amino groups, okay? Whereas a serine, okay, we have the hydroxy group in the side chain, okay? Trionine also has the hydroxy group in the side chain. Tryptophan is a ring structure of amino groups. Tyrosine is a phenols, okay? So, sorry, so this is the side change of your tyrosine and valine is just a hydrocarbon group. So, these are the 20 essential amino acids that you need to remember. Alright, and you need to know how to differentiate where is the side change based on the given structure and formula. Okay, let's move on to the second CLO, your second course learning outcome, which you need to learn how to name your amino acids according to the IUPAC. Okay, I believe all of you now has the ability to name an organic compound because you already start to learn naming the compound from an alkene followed by alkene, okay, and then we move on to uh, carbonyl groups in aldehyde, ketones, alcohols, haloalkenes, and carboxylic acids, and now in the amino acids, okay. So, just a little bit a reminder, alright. So, in amino acids, there are two different functional groups which is present, which we have amino and carboxyl group, okay. So, which one should be the backbone? Uh, I, is it amino or is it the carboxyl groups? Okay, so you need to refer to the functional group priority chart. Okay, and according to that functional group priority chart, carboxylic acid has the higher priority compared to amino. And in fact, carboxylic acid is the highest priority functional groups compared to other functional groups that is present. So whenever we have carboxyl groups in our organic compound, the carboxyl will behave as the backbone, all right? Therefore, for this case, when we are trying to name the amino acids according to the IUPAC name, okay, so the amino groups will be the substituents, so we need to number the amino groups, okay, and the carboxyl groups will become the backbone. So the first carbon will begin from the carbon that is present in your COOH or your carboxyl group. So you need to remember where, whenever you are trying to name an organic compound according to the IUPAC name, we will always start by determining which is the longest carbon chain that is present in the 
structural formula okay and in this example of amino acid we need to make sure the carbon in the cooh serve as the first carbon in the longest carbon chain okay and then we will start to numbering all of the substituents that is present and we need to arrange the substituents uh, in order of alphabetical order okay so let's now go for the first example so this is glycine okay with a short form of gly so glycine has this uh, structural formula okay so first and first you need to identify which is the longest carbon chain and that one serve as the backbone and like i said before the carbon in your coh will always serve as the first carbon in the longest carbon chain or the backbone okay so we have to number it so this is the first carbon and this is the second carbon and my amino uh, serve as the substituent which is located in the second carbon okay so amino as the substituent is known as amino okay so we will start by writing down the number for the amino so it's two amino and this uh, carboxylic acid groups has two carbons on the backbone so two carbon means it's each so two amino ethanoic acid all right so let's look for another example okay so we have here the structures of valine okay so valine has this side chain okay and so first always start by determining the longest carbon chain by c in the coh to be the first carbon so number it first one two three and four so we have four carbon on the longest carbon chain okay so our amino groups is in on the second carbon so this is our amino amino okay and ch3 here we name it as the metal when it is served as the substituents so when writing down the name of valine okay we need to arrange all the substituents in the alphabetical order and we have two substituent present here which is amino and metal and definitely amino has the higher order compared to metal okay so it's two amino dash three metal okay so four carbon in the backbone means is butanoic acid so the general name for valine okay according to the IUPAC is 2 amino 3 methyl butanoic acid okay let's move on to the third example which we have isoleucine okay so the longest carbon chain is containing of 1 2 3 4 5 carbon so it's pentanoic acid with amino group on the second carbon and metal group on the third carbon like usual we're going to arrange the substituents according to alphabetical order so it's two amino three metal and five carbon on the backbone means pentanoic acid okay Okay, let's move on to another example which consisting of a more different uh, side chain. Okay, so in the phenyl alanine, we will have a phenols. Okay, so in phenyl alanines, we will have a benzene ring in the structure. Okay, so let's first identify the longest carbon chain which is only consisting of three carbons. So first, second, third. Okay, so our substituents is the amino group attached on the second carbon. And secondly, we have benzene ring. Okay, on the third carbon. So a benzene ring as a substituent, we will call it as phenyl. Okay, so this one is 2 amino, 3 phenyl, and the carbon chain the longest carbon chain is consisting of three carbons so it's 
triphenyl propanoic acid. So phenyl alanine has the IUPAC name of 2 amino triphenyl propanoic acid. Okay, so I have another example. Okay, so this time I'm going to name essential amino acid that consists of a OH group or hydroxyl group in the side chain. Okay, so again, OH groups in the side chain will serve as the substituents. Alright, so we have two different substituents here amino and hydroxy. Okay, so hydroxy. And this is the amino, okay? So, the carbon on the COH will always be the first carbon. So, first, second, third, and fourth. So, the backbone is consisting of four carbon. So, it's butanoic acid. Okay, so my substituent is located on the second carbon and the third carbon. So, two amino, three hydroxy. Okay, so four carbons mean butanoic acid okay so this is the name for threonine in aspartic acid there are two cooh present in the same compound that means we can start numbering our longest carbon chain or our backbone from both direction okay so one of the cooh is on the left side and another one cooh is on the right side okay so if let's say we start to numbering our longest carbon chain from the left side we will have here one two three four okay so that means our amino groups will be located or attached on our third carbon so it will become three amino okay so our backbone is consisting of four carbon so it's butane and two coh mean dioic acid okay what about if i start to numbering my carbon from right side okay so the right carbon in the coh so one two three four okay so if in this case i will have two amino butane dioic acid okay so between these two which will be accepted as the IUPAC name for my aspartic acid. Definitely the second one because it has the smaller number of the substituents or the smaller number of the location of my amino groups in the aspartic acid. So the first one, 3 amino butane dioxide acid, the number 3 here is bigger than the number 2 here. So the first one is being rejected. Alright guys, so let's move on to the new CLO which is to understand the term sweeter ion and isoelectronic point. Okay, so sweeter ion is a special type of ion. It is a dipolar ion which means we are having a molecule with both positive charge and negatively charged in the same molecule. Okay, so as we know, our amino group is made up of two functional groups, okay, which is amino which has the basic properties and our carboxyl group okay which has the acidic properties okay so this there will be a proton transfer that happen between the carboxyl group and the amino group in our amino acid okay so the carboxyl group which has the acidic properties will donate h plus okay so donate h plus to our amino group okay so our amino group is the basic it will accept that h plus and as a result the amino group will become the ammonium ion okay whereas our carboxyl group will become the carboxylate ion so in the same molecule i have positively charged on the one terminal and i have a negatively charged on the other terminal so dual charge with opposite charge in within the same molecule so this one we name is a sweeter ion okay since it have one positive charge on the other side and one negatively charged on the other side as a result the sweeter ion will have a net charge equals to zero okay so this sweeter ion exists at isoelectronic points. So what is isoelectronic points? Isoelectronic points 
is a special point or a special pH where amino acid which uh, will exist primarily in its neutral form which is sweeter ion so each amino acid will have its own value of isoelectronic point okay so at other value of pH other than this isoelectronic point okay so our amino acid will exist as either acidic ion or as a basic ion okay i will elaborate further about this later on in our last course learning outcome so first let's learn on how to draw your sweeter ion from the given formula of your amino acid okay let's say i have this glycine okay so this glycine has hydrogen as the side chain okay so when it exists as a sweeter ion that means there will be a proton transfer so this h plus from the carboxyl group will be transferred will be donated to my amino group okay sweeter ion it will exist as c c o o negative and then my amino group will turn to be nh3 with a plus charge and the rest of the atoms of the groups remains unchanged okay so this is true a proton transfer okay so this is my sweeter ion all right okay so let's move on with the next example which i have trionine okay so again we're only going to see a proton transfer from the carboxyl group and the hydrogen atoms or uh, the proton will be donated to my amino groups and this amino group as a base will accept that H plus in return we're going to have a sweeter ion okay so the other atoms will just follow okay the same no changes my NH2 now it already accepts a H plus so it becomes NH3 with a plus charge Okay, so COOH will be COO negative because it loses one H plus and this H remains unchanged. So this is a sweeter ion for my trio need. If I have okay, what about if I have leucine? Okay, so this is the long side chain of the leucine. Again, okay, so this H from COOH okay will be acting as a proton h plus will be donated to our amino group okay so we will have nh2 since it accept one h plus it become nh3 plus okay and my cooh it donate that h plus it becomes coo minus so the rest of the amino acid will just follow the original structure okay so we just need to rewrite again everything Okay, so this is the sweeter ion for my leucine, which will only exist at isoelectronic points, which is your PI. Okay, guys, so let's move on to our last course learning outcome for this video, which is to predict the structure of a given amino acid at different conditions. Okay, just to remind you, amino acid will exist as sweeter ion at isoelectronic points or pi okay so every amino acid will have its own specific isoelectronic point value okay let's use valine as an example okay so the structure of valine is like this c c o o h uh, h then and h2 with a side change of c h and C H three as well as C H three. Okay, so let's predict what is the structure of valine at pH equals to eleven. Okay, before we predict what is the structure, or before we draw the structure of valine at this pH, okay, so it's given here the isoelectronic point of my valine is six. Okay, that means valine will exist as a sweeter ion at pH equal to. 6 okay so this one it will exist as sweeter ion okay so that means whenever we have a ph more or less than 6 at isotric point your amino acid will exist as either acidic or basic behavior okay for example here at firstly it asks you to draw the structure of valine at ph equal to 11 which is this pH is greater than our pi. 
So that means at this point, my valine exists as a basic compound. Okay, so from this structure, the original compound of valine, it will turn into a basic means, okay, it will have a negatively charged. Okay, so we have two different functional group, amino and carboxyl group. Okay, that means if it wants to become a basic compound, okay, so I will have a carboxylate ion. So therefore, my valine at this pH of 11, it will have this carboxylate ion and the rest of the structure remains unchanged. Okay, why does it exist as a basic, uh, basic compound? Because the pH is greater than the isoelectronic point. Okay, so let's look at the structure of valine at pH equals to 2. Okay, so pH equals to 2 is less than our pi. Okay, that means it will exist as acidic compound. It will have this NH3 plus, okay? So, the structure of valine, okay, in acidic properties, it will become CH, okay, COOH remains. And now, from NH2, it becomes NH3 with a plus charge, okay? And the rest is remains unchanged. Okay, so this is the acidic compound of valine. Okay, so at isoelectronic points, your valine will exist as sweeter ion. That means both of the functional groups will have a charge, either positive or negative. So our NH2 will accept H plus from COOH, okay, from our carboxyl group, and it become NH3 plus, whereas our carboxyl group, which donate that H plus, will become a negatively charged. So as a sweeter ion, my valine will become like this, okay, COO negative. This side become NH3 plus, and the rest of the side chains remains unchanged. Okay, so this is the structure of valine as sweeter. Ion. So, what is Ritter ion? So, Ritter ion is a compound with dipolar charge. Okay, that means one side of the amino acid has a positively charged, and the other side of the amino acid will have a negatively charged. And as a result, okay, the net charge of the compound is zero. Okay, which this Ritter ion will only exist at the isoelectronic point. Alright guys, that's all for today. Okay, let's recap. What is the cost learning outcome for our video for this uh, amino acid? Which, from this video, okay, you should be able to draw the general structure of alpha amino acid. Okay, secondly, you should know how to name the amino acid according to the IUPAC. Okay, and then you learn about sweeter ions and how to draw the sweeter ions of any amino acid. All right, and in the same time, you're going to uh, you already learn about the definitions of isoelectronic points. Okay, and lastly, you already learn about how to draw the structure of amino acid at different pH. Okay, so either at the basic condition, acidic condition, or at isoelectronic. Points. Thank you for watching this video. Bye bye.